Did you know that there's a possibility that consuming dairy, specifically cow's milk products, can increase your chance of developing type one diabetes? Well, research is starting to show that it's increasingly possible, which is why in this video, we're gonna explain what can cause an autoimmune reaction. We're gonna also point out specific culprits in cow's milk that might be candidates and explain why it might be a good idea to cut cow's milk from your diet completely. And make sure to watch all the way to the end because this might affect more people than you think. Now, type one diabetes is an organ specific autoimmune disorder which targets the insulin producing beta cells in your pancreas. These are the only cells in your body that are capable of manufacturing and secreting insulin which is extremely important. Well, there are several biological mechanisms that can cause your body to target beta cells for destruction. This study has shown that specific proteins found in cow's milk have been found to be highly associated with beta cell destruction. Because of that, let's explain the principle behind how a foreign protein can quote unquote trick your body into attacking a specific population of cells located in a target tissue. Now, autoimmunity begins with a process known as molecular mimicry. And this is a sneaky tactic used by both bacteria and viruses in which pathogenic proteins attempt to evade detection by the human immune system by disguising themselves as mammalian proteins. In both young children and in adults, microscopic holes in the lining of your gut wall will allow these pathogenic proteins to pass directly from your digestive system into your blood before they've been sufficiently cut by digestive enzymes into either single, double, or triple amino acid chain lengths. Once these pathogenic proteins are present in your body, your immune system recognizes them as foreign proteins and mounts an immune response that targets them for destruction. But because these pathogenic proteins mimic proteins found in your body, your immune system can mistakenly target human cells and tissues all over your body. This sets the stage for an autoimmune reaction. Now you can think of autoimmunity as a form of biological friendly fire, if you will, in which your immune system is actually tricked into destroying critical human cells containing proteins that have a very similar architecture. Now scientists used to believe that molecular mimicry only occurred as a result of viruses and bacteria, but now have come to realize that it can also happen as a result of specific dietary proteins, and that's fascinating. So that begs the question, do proteins found in dairy products fit the bill for molecular mimicry and hence initiating type one diabetes? This paper on molecular mimicry lays out four criteria that if met, creates a connection between autoimmune disease and the proposed trigger in question. Number one, is there a similarity between the human protein and the foreign trigger protein? Number two, are there specific human antibodies that are produced in response to that trigger? Number three, is there population-based evidence from epidemiological research demonstrating that higher disease rates occur with higher exposure? And number four, is there conclusive animal testing which shows whether you can replicate the same condition in animal models. We'll use this to explore a key protein in cow's milk. So the cow's milk protein A1 beta casein has a particular amino acid segment referred to as BCM7. BCM7 has been identified as the primary offender in triggering the process of molecular mimicry to set the stage for type one diabetes. So let's see if the four criteria we mentioned are met in the research. From this paper, there's a particular four amino acid sequence that is identical on BCM7 and GLUT2, which is a glucose transporter that is embedded in the plasma membrane of cells in your liver, your pancreas, your intestines, your kidney, and your hypothalamus. Because the sequence on the BCM7 protein and GLUT2 is identical, when your immune system detects the foreign protein in your blood, it can not only destroy the BCM7 protein, but it can also destroy the GLUT2 protein in the beta cells of your pancreas, resulting in a loss of insulin production. So you've got similarity or molecular mimicry right off the bat. Next, do we have antibodies? And the answer is yes. We have antibodies showing up here too. Casomorphins are protein fragments derived from the digestion of cow's milk protein casein, which we mentioned previously. In the research, 
Studies have shown human antibodies to casomorphin peptides, suggesting that the ingestion of cow's milk products can activate the human immune system. So now on to number three, epidemiology. From this study, dairy consumption was associated with increased incidence of type 1 diabetes. This next study is even more compelling. It compares rates between siblings and found that those siblings who drank a lot of milk as children had five times the risk of developing type 1 diabetes as compared with their lower milk drinking counterparts. And finally, can we replicate this in animals? From this 2018 study, feeding milk protein to mice increases their type 1 diabetes rate. Researchers state that this feeding intervention study demonstrates that the consumption of A1 beta casein in genetically susceptible mice increases the incidence of type 1 diabetes. So to wrap it up, we have all four, similarity, antigens, epidemiology, and animal studies, which shows, at least according to that criteria, that a cow's milk protein can influence the development of type 1 diabetes. But that's not the only way that cow's milk might increase your risk of type 1 diabetes. A collection of fascinating research now shows that drinking milk and eating meat can both increase your risk for type 1 diabetes and type 1.5 diabetes via a specific pathogen known as MAP. Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis, otherwise known as MAP. It's a mycobacterium or a bacteria that grows like a fungus and actually has been shown to influence susceptibility to autoimmune type 1 diabetes. Now, the connection between MAP and type 1 diabetes is in fact so strong that a recent review of current scientific literature showed that individuals with type 1 diabetes had a much higher incidence and concentration of both MAP as well as MAP antibodies than non-diabetic individuals. This research shows that the presence of MAP DNA has been identified in between 55.9 and 63% of type 1 diabetes patients as compared with between 16 and 22.7% in healthy controls. Now, the MAP antibodies themselves have also been found in between 47 and 60% of type 1 diabetes patients, but only between 12 and 33% of healthy controls. So not only is MAP protein more prevalent, the MAP antibodies are also more prevalent. So how does MAP enter our food supply? Well, it's a little unsavory. MAP infects the gastrointestinal tract and fecal matter of industrialized cows. So cows being raised for food or milk. It's easily passed between animals due to hundreds or thousands of cows that are living together in close quarters. Next, when animals are slaughtered, the fecal residue from the soil ends up clinging to the boots, the clothes, and the gloves of the slaughterhouse workers. This then cross-contaminates the carcasses of the animals which contaminates both the milk and the meat products on their way to the grocery store. But doesn't cleaning happen? Well, yes and no. No matter how stringent the conditions are at industrial slaughterhouses, MAP migrates into dairy and meat products. Avoiding this contamination when animals are slaughtered is virtually impossible at large scale. A study published in 2007 revealed that more than 68% of all US dairy operations house cows that are infected with MAP and that more than 95% of farms containing more than 500 cows housed animals infected with MAP. And even though milk has to be pasteurized or treated at high temperature to kill off these disease-producing bacteria prior to being sold at the grocery store, it turns out that a very small fraction of the live MAP bacteria can actually escape and survive pasteurization altogether. This means that MAP is present in milk and dairy products that you purchase at the grocery store, including raw milk, bulk milk, pasteurized milk, infant food formula, cheese, ice cream, and flavored milk drinks. So how present is MAP? Well, unfortunately, according to one study in which they investigated the presence of MAP in over 2,500 different milk products, about 2.8% of them contained living MAP bacteria. This means that milk and milk products are a vehicle that transports infectious bacteria directly from cows to humans increasing your risk for developing various autoimmune diseases, including type 1 diabetes. So that leaves us with two clear reasons why it might be better to leave that milk on the supermarket shelf. Do we really need any more? Now, there could actually be a one-two punch effect going on with dairy, given that dairy products are the main source of saturated fat in the standard American diet. 
As we've discussed at length before, insulin resistance results from the accumulation of saturated fat in tissues that are not designed to store large quantities of fat, namely your muscle and your liver tissue. This results in an increase in what are known as intramyocellular lipids in your muscle and intrahepatic lipids in your liver, both of which reduce the ability of insulin to signal to those tissues to get glucose out of your blood. And the truth is that we have quite a few studies. We have studies over here. We got another one over here. We have another one over here. We have this study over there. We have another study over here. And we have this study over here. And all of them show a very similar thing, which is that the saturated fat that's found primarily in meat and dairy products has a significant impact on your risk for the development of diabetes and other chronic diseases. So even if you're not gonna give yourself type one diabetes, you can certainly increase your risk for the development of other chronic diseases simply by consuming dairy products on a daily basis. In conclusion, there appears to be a compelling case for the connection between type one diabetes and cow's milk protein. After all, it meets all four of the criteria for molecular mimicry, similarity, antigens, epidemiology, and animal studies. We also know that living MAP, a contagion with a known connection to type one diabetes is found in about 3% of all milk products that you purchase at the grocery store. And finally, we know that dairy is the main source of saturated fat in the US, which is known to fuel insulin resistance and add to the detrimental impacts of dairy products on diabetes in general. So when it comes down to it, there's quite a few reasons that when you ask the question, got milk? Your answer should be, well, not really. It's our goal to help you learn as much as you can about your body and use that information to truly reverse insulin resistance once and for all. And if that sounds like something you might be interested in, then keep listening. There's a reason that so many people are talking about their A1C miracle. It's because the method works. We have a range of programs from group coaching to private coaching, which can all help you take control of your life. In order to find out which option is best for you, we suggest booking a free discovery call. Simply click the link below and you'll be directed to a page where you can book a time that works for you and speak with a member of the Mastering Diabetes enrollment team. Now, also don't forget to push that cute little like button with your thumb or with your mouse. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you can be notified of videos when they come out in the near future. We got a ton of new content coming out and I think you're going to like all of it. See you guys in the next video.